that it is doing what it's supposed to be doing, all things along those lines. The second reason, and the social science dork that I am part of this that I'm interested in, is I'm also very excited that we are kind of meeting as a committee and kind of doing this kind of committee and this community work on behalf of SCURF to help make SCURF a better place. And one of the things that Brian and I have kind of chatted about and the thing that I want to continue to do is like, how can we kind of do these committees out in public and like a thing that I would love long-term vision for me is that everyone turns to SCURF when they're like, how do committees do cool stuff or how do communities do cool stuff? And we are basically kind of laying the um, foundation for like a franchisable how just to do stuff well. Marta, if you are working in city governance, I am pretty sure that you have a lot that you can be contributing um, as well to just how do committees do stuff? Because as a resident of a small city, uh, and I get to go to city council meetings and stuff like that, I know that committees are kind of like the heart and blood of all that type of stuff. So um, one of the things that I'm going to try to get us in the habit of doing is having agendas uh, that have meeting minutes uh, after I'll get some meeting minutes going here in a, a little a bit. Um, and each of these are issues on our GitHub. Uh, eventually, I'd like to make this a board. Uh, but I, what I want to make sure that we're doing all the time is taking this agenda and making it public and probably a little bit sooner than we did this time and inviting people to add additional agenda items. So for me, this is the agenda that I would like to cover for today. Like we have some new people, mission accomplished. Um, I think we just kind of did that, but we'll cover a little bit more in that in the the deck that Brian is going to walk us through. Um, I'm talking about this literally right now, uh, but I want to make sure that we are covering all of the things that we need to cover as a committee and that it's not just kind of being written, uh, driven from the top down, right? We should all be kind of stakeholders in this. So um, this is kind of a system I'd like us to kind of try around or to try out or for a little bit, and we will see how that goes. Um, and I'll stop sharing this and also get out of Discord so it'll stop notifying us all of all the stuff that's going on. Um, but uh, to start with, uh, Marta, I know that was like a whole bunch of stuff, and like you've just recently found us. Um, were there any kind of immediate questions that you kind of have about like what this meeting is, what source cred is, what SCURF is trying to do that we could kind of jump in and kind of help us out with? And then I'm also always happy to do one on ones. Uh, I guess the few comments I would have is that, um, you know, in terms of getting the word out and getting people involved, you know, I'm I, I work for the mayor of Houston and we have 2.1 million people and 635 square miles. And uh, we have a lot of pockets of people. And this is one of the things I've noticed a lot in, in this whole community is that we have pockets of people who barely even have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So when we try and push towards digitization of notices and stuff, we have these people who are like, I don't, look at the internet i don't i only use my phone to call my grandson and and so how do you reach those folks those folks probably aren't the ones that this this community is focused on but it, it can be an issue with some folks who are in places with limited con connectivity and and limited access to technology so um that's the that was my one thought as you were going through your intro yeah, I appreciate that. That's actually also a thought process that I have um, kind of big picture wise on Web3, uh, not necessarily what this committee is about, but you know, as blockchain, like how do we use blockchain technologies, but also continue to have some accessibility considerations. Chris, go for it. Yeah, I've actually worked with a lot of uh, communities that don't have access to like electricity, let alone internet. So their concerns are a lot different. And it's not that they don't want to be involved in conversations like these. It's like they have a lot of other things to address before they sit down and start talking about like source credit on a forum or something. Um, so it's not to say that people in those positions can't be involved in these conversations. It's more so it's just the idea that they should have access to the conversation just arbitrarily overlooks the idea that they actually have a lot different and other concerns besides like it's actually a luxury to be talking about this stuff so like they don't really necessarily have the luxury to be talking not to say that they 
shouldn't have the access. It's just more so like if I personally was sitting here worried about having to pay my bills or like pay rent, I wouldn't actually be able to be mentally present in the conversation, let alone um, completely disenfranchised where my electricity might cut out in the middle of this call. Um, so it's like if people there, there's excess and there's inclusivity and access does not equal inclusivity. So that's where I'm always of the mind where it's like just openly creating access does not actually equal inclusion, especially when you're trying to include people that you're not really considering their situation. So it's like, I think a lot of things in the access space are performative and not really connected to the situation on the ground. Well, one thing I would comment on is the one of the nice things about SourceCred to kind of rein in a little bit is is like anybody who does have the access, no matter where they are in the world, if there is a way to get access to a, a, a digital wallet, a cryptographic wallet, one doesn't have to necessarily rely on the presence of a banking system in order to benefit from engaging with our, you know, specifically our community, right? Like directly with SourceCred, right? So if there are people in the world anywhere who have a thought about blockchain issues, smart contract issues, or simply just want to participate, even if they don't necessarily think they have something to offer, that is a value to our community and it will be rewarded with DAI, which is a, you know, a stable coin currency. Um, so that opportunity is something that is there and present. So that would just be my comment. Yeah, well, and further, with, uh, Chris, there with that great segue. Well, the issue becomes like the the less data needed to participate in a conversation, the easier it becomes for people with limited data or limited access to actually participate. So something that's in the form of a forum that then is also light in data because it's not a bunch of videos, it's not a bunch of gifs. Um, there, there's not actually a ton of excess data. This would be something, and then it's not a, a heavy social media app like uh, Facebook or something that then requires a ton of extra data. Somebody who, who's disenfranchised and wants to participate in the conversation actually has a much better chance of contributing in something that's whittled down to only the data and only the base conversation. So I think this is where the the format and all of the information being presented as simply as possible is conducive to those types of uh, access compatibility like solutions where somebody could actually navigate the forum on a smartphone fairly fairly easily uh, versus um, trying to navigate uh, JSTOR or plus one or some sort of uh, index of a bunch of articles to comment on. I think it, it's significantly more navigable and, and we're also having conversations on the forum about content. So uh, in a way it allows people to then ask questions and post those questions in a, a uh, asynchronous time so if someone has the answer they can check back later and their response will still be connected to that specific question and they don't have to sit there in a the chat and wait um, but it's also in a dedicated spot cool. yeah so i like um i like that we are taking on these big pictures and in the desires and barriers to the implementation of this technology but i do want to rein us back into like what is the specific purpose of what we're doing today but um like absolutely echo the stuff that chris has said um also to lupe or lope right um welcome um, i don't think we've had an opportunity to hear from you yet uh, we did some introductions before you got here um do you want to have an opportunity to do that All right. 
then we will move into purpose of this, right? So to kind of rein us in of, of what our purpose is. So we have this implementation. This implementation has been alive now for a month. Uh, Dai uh, went out uh, yesterday. Um, and Brian is going to also work us through kind of how we got to that allocation and some background information. And then I want to make sure like, so important things that we need to accomplish today is, are there changes that need to make? And are we, or let's make those convert those changes, or at least um, what is our plan to socialize that we'd like to make some changes or basically how would we like this committee to be able to move forward um, is, you know, in some ways we could also decide what is the power that we feel comfortable um using or do we want to kind of get more community input so i'll get started i'll turn the mic over to brian and you can kind of work us through some of the initial stuff you have there okay cool let me go ahead and share my presentation here and i think if i press that it should do the slideshow thing cool all right so yeah so that we are going to talk about uh source cred and our organization, Smart Contract Research Forum. Uh, we've kind of already talked about the agenda, and then I'm going to get into some of the information about source cred, cred rank, and kind of how we calculated our initial payout for the month of May. Um, yeah, so that's what I just said. We're going to talk about um, these topics. OK, let's just get right into it. So first of all, um, we have a ticket sort of system. I guess technically on GitHub, they're called issues, but Paul kind of touched on this already. Uh, we want to uh, continue to drive the conversation forward after this presentation, and GitHub is the place to capture uh, community feedback uh, in between the meetings. And we're going to we're going to expand on this moving forward. This is just a start. Um, but uh, really quick introduction to SourceCred is basically you come and participate in our forum. Uh, you will earn through that participation uh, SourceCred uh, rank, and that will then determine. Um, a die payout that will be issued to you for that pers uh, participation. That is a very quick and high level overview. And I would encourage you to check out the links here if you'd like to get into the history and a lot more detail about all, all of that. In order to re uh, receive die, you actually have to go through our source cred opt in sequence. It's very simple. You just log on to our Discord server, click into the opt in channel here and fill out the form. And then you only have to fill out that form one time. And we just need that um, form to get your, your wallet address. And then you, every month, have to opt in um, month by month. So right now, we're in the month of June 2022. And all you have to do is click the little uh, ticket there. And if you complete those steps, you will be eligible to receive DAI. Now, you will, of course, have to have an account on our forum in, or, in order for this to work for you. So that is, I guess, an implicit uh, uh, requirement there. OK, so here is the results for May. Um, the list that you see on the left of your screen represents everybody who went through the opt-in sequence and claimed uh, source cred. The percentage here is uh, essentially how much participation. Oh, hold on. Somebody is wanting to join. Oh. What happened? It went away. I got him in. Oh, <laughs> great. Thank you. I forgot I had a, a co-pilot here. Uh, yeah, so the percentages here are based on the total participation of all of the cred percent that was handed out. And this is the first interesting point here. There are a lot of contributors in our community who did not opt in on purpose, or maybe they just aren't as active anymore, didn't know about it, whatever the case may be. Only 24.3% of all of the cred was claimed. And uh, that is something to keep in mind as we move forward into the calculation slides. Um, if you want to follow along with these cred, lengths, uh, oh, cred ranks, we have a link here to our GitHub issue that we will put this information in and keep it up, updated with everything that's going on. So this, um, this uh, entry in our docs repo for source cred is really the central place to keep up to date with uh, everything that's going on with, with source credit and SCURF. So here are some of the calculations that went into the payout this month. So we had a total die pool of 5,000 die, 16 people opted in. The return pool, which again is all the people who didn't opt in, 
totaled to 3,760 die. And that meant that the way it works is essentially that um, return share, it gets split amongst everybody who did opt in. So the minimum payout was 235 die just for opting in. Uh, and that's an interesting that we can discuss in more detail soon. Um, and the trimmed die pool is the amount of die that was left over to distribute amongst the people who were participating and uh, earned um, cred ranks. And so this is creating a little bit of an interesting, uh, oh, and sorry, there's there's a 25 die slippage due to rounding errors in my math, and I'm going to try and do better math next next <laughs> next month to try to get those rounding errors out of there. But, but basically, uh, we have an inter interesting situation here where because we have sort of such a low percentage of percent claimed that the, the people who effectively didn't contribute much got a kind of a high uh, minimum. And so one of the things that I offer to this discussion and, um, and moving forward is how can we change the um, return structure to sort of emphasize more of a return share to the people who are involved and, and actively contributing and perhaps less to the people who simply sign up? because um, yeah, because right now I would I would offer that getting 235 die just for signing up is a little bit much, and perhaps we should sort of figure out how to change that so that the people who are contributing uh, get a larger piece of the return uh, return pool. And great. So with that, that is the end of my presentation, and I'll just leave these links. Uh, you can you can get these links uh to everything i spoke about it's in it's in the uh, the slide deck there so i will leave this uh, slide up for now and go ahead and turn it back to chris yes so in terms of the return share i think it makes sense to use the percentage contribution as a multiplier instead of an additive because if somebody adds then it adds on top but if it's like times one plus like if it's the percentage times one plus the the return then anybody who has zero percentage contributions um shit, it still adds the number um <laughs> yeah or maybe maybe it's like the return times their percentage because then if it's like 235 times eight then i get eight percent of the 235 return per share because it's like yeah because then it's like if there's 10 10 return shares then i'd get eight percent of each share but if i had zero percent i would get zero percent of each share i think that's where it should go so it's yeah. like the the number of percentage share times the return of the die per share times the number or divided by the number of shares per person. I think I think that makes it work, right? Yeah, I understand where you're coming. I think that that would make some sense. And let me just quickly, yeah, Paul, go ahead. And just really quick to clarify. So Chris, you are basically proposing that there is like a, um, like so mathematically we'd be creating a bottom of how much or a bottom score before you start to get any allocation of die, right? Yes, exactly. Because then it's like you if you have zero percentage contribution, even if you opt in, you would still have to get at least like 0.01% to actually start getting a return. Um so then it like it puts a lower limit, but it's above it's just basically above zero. And the lower limit is anything above zero basically. Yeah, so it's an it's an interesting kind of topic of like what is the minimum threshold for doing nothing basically. There's the idea of like kind of oh and by the way Seth, thanks for joining. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself if you'd like, but he's actually part of the source cred uh, development um, moving into the past of of the source cred history. So he has a, a lot of knowledge and experience with source cred, and it's great to have you part of this meeting today. Um, yeah, so the idea basically is like. If we have kind of a, a a minimum amount of of kind of contribution that people can get just from participating and opting in, um, I think that that definitely should. Right now, I, it, 
the fundamental idea here is that it's not weighted evenly to people who are participating. So I think that is like a, a big takeaway for, for this conversation is something that I think we can all agree on. And then moving forward, we can think about like, how do we shift that amount down so that the people who are simply signing up aren't getting as much out of the gate. And so um, one thing I'd like to propose is to develop like a spreadsheet or something that has the mathematical model in it so that we can kind of more clearly understand um, how the payment structure would transition from source cred percentage to actual die payout. And with that, that uh, Marta, sense. Marta, go ahead, please. Thank you. Yeah, my one thought is that the, one of the first things I noticed on here was that we only have 24% claimed. So in the early days, well, maybe we call it the early adopter phase. You, you, I, we, you call it the early adopter phase, um, but not to make those changes until later, because what you're looking to do now is to increase your numbers. And anything that reduces the payouts now, other than getting more people in the pipeline, is just going to be a disincentive. So, you know, maybe call it a, th a two or three month intro period where you can get die just for signing up and opting in, even if you don't participate. And then at least you'll get more people in the pipeline. But that's just, it's just an option. Yeah, that's actually a great thought too, because one of my kind of thoughts behind the scene also along this line was that the more people that sign up, the the share pool gets smaller, right? So like right now it's only kind of large because we have kind of so few people signed up, but if we had a hundred people, it'd only be like, you know, 10 die or whatever. <laughs> anyway. So I did have a really quick question kind of to piggyback off of Marta's there. So for the 24%, uh, I know that our top percent earner did not opt in. Um, how much percent is that? Uh, was the top percent earner? Um, do you happen to know that? Yeah, it would be around nine or ten percent, I think. Okay. So, what about our top ten? Like, what uh, just produced our top ten people? What percentage of our cred produced would that cover? That's a great question. If you give me a moment, I'll look, mm -hmm. I'll uh, figure that out. Because it'd be like to me, the reason why I'm asking this is um, so I would like to see more people claim uh, the the cred that they have. Um, I do know that there are some people who are still um, pretty high in our boards that uh, I'm going to consider them legacy people. So part of our implementation here, so part of the discussion um, that we had is we're basically trying to help people who are brand new get rewarded. But we are also trying to also maintain what is the long-term value of your contributions. And so there are some people who are probably never going to claim their die that are still, I think, probably in the top, probably in the top 10. And so while I want to see that total percentage increase, like some of that's also just going to be as more people participate, even on the forum, uh, their percentage of die or their percentage of cred um, will just also be kind of reducing as well. Do you know why they're not going to claim their cred, their die? Uh, so some of them have migrated away from SCURF over time. Um, they, they may come back someday. It'd be fantastic if they did, uh, but they, they have not really been active in SCURF in I'm going to say eight plus months. And so the likelihood that they're going to come back and be part of our implementation um, is unlikely. So that's probably just always going to be going into the return pool. Got it. So it's a, the top 10 percentage uh, is 48.7. And that isn't distinguishing opt-in or not opt-in. That's just from the source of everybody. So of all cred percent rank earners, the top 10 consisted of 48.7% of the distributed cred. Well, thanks, Brian. Which, is, which are really interesting to, to statistics. And also, I would mention that I am keeping a log of all of these statistics. So if we wanted to do like some kind of analysis or charting and so on and so forth, it could be interesting to do a year from now or a couple of months from now even. And another thing that we can consider, uh, consider too as um, perhaps a topic of discussion is whether or not we want to continue um, calculating cred rank on year uh, year to date, which not sorry, not year to date, but like the lifetime of all activity versus the past month. 
Um, so that's something also to consider. And the idea with that would be, I think, is if we wanted to incentivize the um, contribution of new new content, if we were to measure the change over the month, it would incentivize the content that was generally weighted over the past month. Seth, maybe that's something that you can chime in on if I might spotlight you a second. So if, if we were to change the uh, the time scale view of the cred rank percentage over the month, would that time slice of the month, is that would that, what, am, am I inferring correctly that the people who would con be contributing over the past month would sort of be at an advantage as far as the cred percent rank is? Uh, so, uh, like, first, just uh, like uh, I'll make a a distinction um, between cred and payouts. Die. Uh, I'm seeing some sort of conflating of the two, maybe in the discussion oh. a little bit, which is totally which is totally normal. Um, uh, but like, uh, so yeah, cred, um, like. Uh, cred so cred is like just calculates based on con like all time contributions. Uh, I think that there might be some hacks where you could get it to just focus on like a window, but um, but generally it it it's all time and that that is like a that was an intentional choice. Um, however, if like it sounds like maybe what you're talking about is more directing the rewards. I think I need to back up a step and and frame yeah, my question yeah, a little yeah, better. Yeah. No, no, of course, because I know you didn't come in at the beginning, and so you probably missed a couple of steps. That so one of the things that we're doing is that we're, you know, when you log onto the the source cred dashboard, you get the metrics view, and you, it, one of the the tables that it presents is the cred rank, and so basically what we're doing is we take the cred rank score, and we have our own little calculation there which allows us to kind of use the cred rank percentages as a baseline to determine how much die we end up distributing. And we're, we're calculating that manually in order to kind of control the narrative and the sort of the, um, the way in which we are using source cred, I suppose you could say, uh, rather than doing it um, just sort of directly within the system. So um, yeah, so we're taking the cred percentages as the baseline to, to make our own calculations off. And so I guess the question is, when I view, when you view the cred percentage table in the in the uh, source cred dashboard, there are, there's a time scale toggle that you can go between last week, last month, and and all time. And that was kind of what I was wondering is, uh, is like if we were to take the table that gets produced over the past week and use that calculation instead of the all data table, that we would be able to then you know kind of hone in more on that time that that time frame and we could have a different um sort of consideration to how that's being calculated but i'm that's something i've been trying to understand more about myself so yeah um that seems like that seems like a smart way to do it um like uh, by calculating things manually it gives you a lot more freedom yeah to like you know like yeah customize to what the community wants um, I would say if you're comfortable on the command line and uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, and have like some tech uh, expertise, I, I might recommend uh, a tool which allows you to download the raw cred data. Uh, That's which awesome. uh, yeah, it's just an observable notebook actually, which like uh, should be accessible for most for most people. Um, I'll I'll drop a link to it. And then it'll you can just import that into Excel and then slice the data however you want in like, and then that would allow you to say like do two week increments instead of like one week, which is kind of arbitrary. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And that is another topic of conversation that I was going to start introducing into this community call. I didn't necessarily think this week, but the automation side of it. And uh, we, I think, uh, absolutely have that as a goal. And, and I think as a process, we're still firming that up. And so I think it seems like a good time to begin, you know, introducing some of that so that I can learn about it. And I think that sounds like a really awesome idea. And thanks for sharing. Yeah, Paul. So I do want to make sure that we have time for that type of discussion. But I want to like real quick pause. And so I, I think that we have some general consensus here that the use opt-in and 
are just getting the same amount of return pool as um, people who are contributing. Like, do we have consensus that that is a problem or do people want to kind of carry forward with this and just see what happens if more people start um, opting in and it's therefore the return pool is getting smaller? I, I mean, if I get a vote, I would say leave it alone for now. Okay. You're, I mean, I would assume, assuming that the main drive here is to get more people in the pipeline, then get more people opting in, then there's no reason to limit how much die they're getting at this point. There'll be some point where you do want to change that math um, and 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 uh, reward more of the people who are contributing now as opposed to contributing over the lifetime. But I mean, until you have more than 24% of the people claiming their die, then um, I don't know why we, you would want to limit that at this point. Uh, anyone else who would like to speak to this? Or should we leave it alone? Well, I will just say as far as this, if anybody would like to contribute their thoughts, feel free to follow up on the GitHub issue that I linked. And we'd love to, um, you know, if you want to follow up later, we don't mean to put anybody on the spotlight. And we're going to also turn this question forward to the community offline as well. So it's not as though we're going to wrap this decision up in, you know, the context of this meeting. So it will be an ongoing discussion. Personally, my take is I think we should, uh, um, I think it's an interesting concept, and the, it'll be interesting to see what people say about that balance. Hey, Richard, welcome. Okay, is uh, should we move it into like an open comments slash questions, or how do you want to proceed, Paul? Yeah, I mean, I think that that was that was the one that was the one specific thing that I know that we had wanted to talk about agenda item wise. Um, but yeah, so I think uh, for the people who are in this call. Um, people who've been kind of paying attention to what is happening on the forum, like observations on the forum and um, the types of things that we'd like to have as a community and a culture on the forum. Um, other just kind of open observations about what we currently think our implementation of source cred is doing a good job of incentivizing or a bad job of incentivizing. I think that that's a thing that we could kind of discuss. Uh, Brian, I know you'd also brought up the idea of some automation, so we can kind of talk about some of the automation elements here. Um, and then third, a thing that we kind of talked about in the very, very, very first meeting of this committee was uh, right now as um, as a group, this has a allocation of 5,000 die. And do we feel like that is the correct amount uh, and, you know, or, or too big, too small, uh, just right? So those are kind of maybe to prime some thoughts that we could have, but just in general, um, how do people perceive source credit is currently working? And for some of you, you're brand new, so you might not necessarily know that, but um, that doesn't mean that, you know, just general ideas. But yeah, Chris, go ahead. Is it monthly? Just to before I... So initially I thought 5,000 was a lot, but mainly because we're in the early stages of the organization, so it's like, it feels heavily weighted towards a few people, but as the organization grows and the participants grow, I feel like that will be a perfect amount um, because it's like between the first and second iteration of the scores, it was like four people opted in the first time, then 24. and out of those 24, not all of them participated, but some of them will get rewards. So they're definitely, I would assume the people who got rewards just for opting in will probably do it again. Um, so as, as a community incentive mechanism, I really, I feel like 5,000 is enough to grow with the community, but also not too much to where, like, I feel like if it was 10,000, then people would start trying to really come in and game the system because 10,000 is a lot of money. 5,000 is not an insignificant amount, but it's a huge difference between five and 10. Um, so that's where, for the sake of 
trying to create an incentive for growth without creating an incentive for abuse, I feel like five is like the perfect medium. Yeah, one of the other ideas too about this sort of baseline payment is is uh, is to get just get to kind of get people into into the door, right? And get get people into the forum, get the account created, and uh, and I think once the word gets out there a little bit more, and we can be more direct, you know, we can kind of create messaging that's more direct about right now. If you sign up, you're going to get a decent amount of die for it, but um, you know, to Marta's point, we're trying to get people in the door, and I think it'll be interesting to see a month from now if we double or triple or whatever the number, you know, one can imagine, one can dream, I suppose. And and that pool is going to shrink down, and it won't seem as shocking or as um, uh, unfair, I suppose, when it gets distributed out amongst more people. And once, the, once that occurs, then we can, um, I think, really adjust it and incentivize the content creation once kind of we've had that onboard rush or we feel we've perhaps hit a threshold that we're happy with. Yeah, Chris, thank you. And as as the actual community grows, so that it opens it up for collaboration, it could be something where other organizations could be invited to match the community reward. So it's like, if Scurf is putting up 5,000, uh, whatever company could come in and put up another 2,500, another company could put another 2,500. So that I think having, of a reliable incentive mechanism then opens the door for other communities to contribute to that reward mechanism to participate in this structure. Because I think that is something that uh, other research hubs would want to uh, create like a collaborative prize and the capacity to do it at on like a month off, one one off time is like a really great opportunity. So I'm just asking for some clarification here because I am also kind of taking meeting minutes, which is difficult to participate in take meeting minutes. But when I was hearing what you're talking about, Chris, I was very interested in this and so um, what you are saying is if we make a reliable mechanism that rewards the type of discussion that SCURF is aiming to reward, you think that that might attract other organizations that are similarly aligned with our mission, but maybe not in a position to pull that off. And you think that they would kick in additional die to this die pool? Is that kind of like the- Oh, the most feature? definitely, definitely. And I think the issue becomes every organization doesn't want to make that lift. They don't want to be the scurf that is doing the source trade implementation, but they might want to encourage conversation knowing that the people participating will be rewarded. Now that that mechanism is in, in existence and also transparent, I, I can totally imagine NGOs aligned with uh, different aspects of Web3 or academia would like to contribute to that mechanism just purely monetarily because they already do it. Um, they already give out grants. They already donate. So it's not that we would be creating this new type of thing. It's just now there's actually a more transparent mechanism for them to say, oh, if we're contributing to, if we're donating to accelerate the conversations around Web3, there's a clear mechanism to show, oh, the people who contributed the most of the conversation get a monetary reward. Um, so I do think that because it has been tested and has some data backing it and it shows like, now we're starting to do a way that we can show month to month. This is like not going to in, incorrectly weigh people who've been here from the very beginning. And this system is going to recognize if there's a monthly reward, the, the people who contributed last month get it. That I think is, it, it's like, obviously we're not necessarily asking for donations out the gate, but it, as it's, it's a more efficient way to direct investment in uh, research. And I think that's kind of like the, the conversation around research, it's very clear that this type of incentive mechanism that also has a transparent and measurable system is 
more appealing than a system that has no transparency and has no measurable output. I was just going to follow up and say, look, one of the things that I think is really exciting about what you're talking about, Chris, is the way that SourceCred kind of enables that vision by creating like um, rewards that are content content agnostic. So like it's not like a company comes in or some organization comes in and say, hey, we want to promote X, Y, and Z coin or whatever specific blockchain. It's no, it's the, the money is going into the community at large and, and just in, improving the ability to SourceCred to run. And at no point can anybody go in here and say, oh, you know, you're, you're shilling or this is like totally a shill effort. Like uh, it would actually be rather interesting from that perspective, I think. Oh, and one other comment, we actually spoke about this a little bit last in our last meeting. And so um, I would uh, I think we have the recording somewhere. So that would be a, a good thing to go check out um, to get some of the context of that. Another thing I remember that we spoke about was that we could sort of because we have control over over the the die payout side, we could do special um, runs if we have a particular thing that we want to promote, whereby we do a two x um, on new content. We and and I would also like to remind everybody that we have the ability to change the the weighting on the nodes and edges, right? So we can, as a community, say, uh, let's let's actually promote con Let's have a, a week of promoting content, or rather, a month of promoting content, and we shift the weights to that. So. Um, and we can let people know, like, hey, you know, come, come, get, get, get ready for September. It's the month of content or whatever, where we're going to shift the weight to content and everybody who is excited about that and et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of flexibility that this approach brings. Uh, Adrian, yes, thanks. Um, I think that you have a lot of flexibility here as you do the initial rollout and in saying that the the payment structure will change. And you can incentivize whatever behavior you're going for at that time. Like right now, we just need signups. And that's why we're saying it makes sense to be practical and say kind of hands off. We don't give out a huge die pool this time, right? Because we know we're going to get not necessarily, we're going to get quantity right now. Like a lot of people signing up that may not participate if we incentivize this way. And then in the future, we change our incentive structure to be, say, number of posts. And that creates exploitative behavior where someone is going around and just commenting and saying like, hi, bump, hello on every post, you know, but we still get more posts. It incentivizes that behavior. And then we go to say, now it's by number of posts, 10% and your ranking, you know, community upvotes of your account this month. And we slowly roll out this shifting kind of uh, payment structure and increase the scope as we get more specific. So as we narrow down on what we want to reward we offer larger rewards and that should keep everything growing and active in a way that we want to, to see yeah seth go ahead please thanks yeah so like um just as far as like rewarding number of posts uh i think that uh just directly doing that would probably lead to gaming however there is a way in the algorithm to uh, to like in, to increase the weight on number of posts versus number of likes on a post. Uh, uh, and like the way that works is basically just like a certain amount of cred is minted whenever a post happens and whenever a like on a post happens and you can change the ratio of cred minted. Uh, and so like if you wanted to do what you're uh, like uh, what, what you're describing there, you could you could do it in a way that's like less gameable, probably. Cool, that's very interesting. Yeah, a lot of... So we've got about ten minutes uh, left in this call. Um, if yeah, Paul, please. So just to kind of follow up on what Adrian and Seth were just saying, um, is there a way right, without um, like so as a committee as a group, uh, is there a way that we might be able to look at what is currently um, like we know th these three people did this type of behavior and that produced this type of cred for them. And we do want that type of behavior. We don't want that type of behavior. Um, so instead of kind of running like a day by day manual execution of it, is there kind of a way that we could say like, oh, we saw this behavior on the forum. And I wonder what that did to the cred score um, so that we as a committee can kind of take a look at that type of data and make decisions um kind of like adrian is proposing that we're making
Yeah, go for it, Seth. Uh, there is an observable notebook floating around that allows you to analyze uh, like each person's cred flows. Um, going from, um, I'll caution that going from that to changing parameters uh, and like it, it is is maybe more difficult than uh, like than people are imagining. But you can you can see the rough behavior, and I'll uh, I'll drop a link to that observable. Uh, along with another, the other one I mentioned that gives you the rock red data. Yeah, one, one of the things that we uh, as an organization want to build into is a sort of a dashboard view where our community can get more real time insight um, as to what's going on here. So that'll be really useful in moving forward. So I appreciate that information. Thank you. So if there are no other kind of contributions or um, observations that people have to make, um, I do want to make sure that we kind of keep this committee being something that um, every time we come to meet, we have like homework to do. So uh, we already had a little bit of a conversation about whether or not we'd leave the uh, current return share mechanism the way it is. I think as a group, uh, I'm now hearing, I think a consensus that we probably do but we want to make sure that we get some other of our stakeholders uh, contributions on that so we will update one of the threads or the implementation thread on the forum is a next action uh, what other actions would we like to see happen between now and our meeting in a month well i'd like to, i'll kick that off as an individual kind of working towards this um i think one thing i'd like to do is engage in more advertisement and more outreach not, not only inside of uh, our own Discord, but perhaps in adjacent community Discords. I know that we've had some ambassadorship kind of ideas floating around inside of our own community, and maybe we can work with some of our socials. I know the socials have been advertising our source cred efforts, and then also on our forum, maybe we can do some more posting about, you know, recapping this meeting and, you know, bringing this information forward into our community. So maybe we can outline some of that in, in the uh, GitHub ticket as, um, uh, in this coming week or something like that. Awesome, updating that ticket. Other things? Yeah, Marta. So I was, I did see posts in Discord about opting in and that whole process. Um, I don't remember them being very many or, you know, I'm thinking more like flash ads. So like just a once a day or something, you know, a quick one line somewhere in the community, uh, in the community chat or something about opting in. Um, and, and then a link to where to go to do that might be helpful. Cause I don't remember seeing very many messages about it. And if this initial pr pushes for people in the pipeline, then the big long post about how to do it all is is less necessary than the um, discussion, uh, getting people to start talking about the benefit of it, if that makes sense. It does, thank you. Yeah, that I appreciate your feedback and we're definitely going to increase that. Uh, one thing too, I think is, this is the first month of a payment actually going out and I think the word will definitely spread faster once people realize that the die is actually hitting the wallet, so to speak. And uh, we have about twice as many people in this week's uh, meeting as we did last week. So that's already a, a good metric. Yeah, I'm particularly excited by the number of people who are in this uh, this meeting because that's one of the other things that I'm putting on the to-do is not just to get people to be part of the source cred payout um, and contribution to the forum, but I also would like us as an organization to celebrate that we do exactly this type of thing, right? So. We have a committee of interested stakeholders who are part of our organization or somewhat part of our organization, and we get to talk through, you know, how would we like this to happen? Um, and so I want to celebrate this too. So I'm making that as our to-do list. Uh, anything else that we want? Uh, also, Chris, to your, hey, yeah, um, you should you should have seen that yesterday or yeah last night. Well, was there one from April? Uh, from April? Mm -mm. 
No, sir. No, not for April. It started in May. Is that the one with the four people, or is that the one with the twenty-four? I'm um, I'm not sure. I understand. Or because I thought in one in one sign up only four people signed up, and then in one uh, opt in because there's an opt in. Oh, because I saw an opt in from four twenty five, and then there's an opt in from six oh one. So I didn't know if there were two payouts. So the four twenty five one, I believe, was the start of like we were going to capture that, and then the whole month of May. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, because it also does also Chris like it doesn't really. I mean, other than the fact that we didn't send out extra money. In terms of like the payout sequence, it's you know because of the way source cred works, it's totally cumulative, right? And so it's not like there's anything missing there, I suppose. Okay, cool. Um, three minutes. Uh, does anybody have any closing thoughts or anything else that they would like to add? Well, this has been a great meeting. Um, thanks for everybody for coming out. Paul, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, just that I'm going to go through these terrible minutes that I took and make them seem like actual sentences and put them in an issue. Like, so like we had talked about at the very beginning of the meeting, uh, this is not going to be an issue. I'll kind of remind people that these minutes exist um, and we'll get working on the agenda for the next month, um, probably about two weeks from now. And I will be announcing that and we will be taking some of these actions that we talked about. So just to quick review the actions that I captured that we want to make sure we do between now and next month is we would like to engage a little bit more in the advertisement of this, both internally and externally. Um, some of that is to do some more community chat about the opt-in and linking to the specific place to do that, uh, that we want to update a forum post or maybe even potentially make a new forum post um, that talks about this meeting and gives a recap of it. And we would link these minutes and the agenda to that. Um, and then I also want to make sure that we celebrate this both internally in the chat, um, but also through the socials. Um, and then also putting the idea to kind of the rest of the org on the potential, like, do we leave the mechanics alone for right now and see how it continues to develop? Or, or do we want to start making some changes right now and getting this on YouTube? Thank you, Brian. So yeah, as long as there's nothing that I missed, um, I consider this a super successful meeting as well. All right, thanks everybody. I guess we'll end it here. Cool. Thank you so much for spending time with us, everyone. Bye.